Hello everyone, John Fennell here uh, again from Great Lakes Fly Shop and today we're going to be doing kind of a, uh, it wasn't kind of planned but I thought well you know I might as well do this as a class because it became uh, a notice uh, that I haven't had anything inside the shop and actually the hexes are starting to come up. Uh, it is June 19th and uh, normally we start seeing the hexes at the end of the month here in northern Minnesota and some of the upper northern lakes uh, but they have reported starting to see some on the Brule in Wisconsin so I thought well uh, let's tie some hex patterns and normally what I like to do is a pattern called the paradrake it's an old hex pattern it's been around for quite a few years uh, and it's a it's a it's a fairly simple fly to tie but it does have some tricky parts about it uh, the thing to understand is that the size matters. I know. Like anything in a, in a fly, you're going to find that people are going to come in and say, hey, well, the fly is too small, or hey, it's too big. So I try to time about medium size. Uh, and it's a fairly, uh, you know, a fly that, you know, you could do pretty fast. And that's what the situation calls for because I didn't have any hexes in the shop. So I thought, well, I better get some tied. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the materials we're going to be using for this fly, I'm sorry if I'm a little quick on this, but if you got any questions, give me a call, 218-740-3040, or go on my webpage at www.greatlakesflies.com and just put in the email and I'll be more than happy to help you out with this situation. So what I'm using for this particular fly is I like to use a lot of the longer uh, uh, deer belly hair uh, that they have out there. Try to find the stuff that's pretty long uh, and thick. Uh, and in this case, I'm using kind of a yellowish, I don't know, yellowish olive color. Try to get more toward the darker yellows. If you ever seen a hex done, they are pretty bright yellow when they first come up as duns. They do turn a little darker when they start turning into spinners. Uh, but yeah, around general, you could do pretty decent with, you know, kind of like this color. Anyway, deer belly hair, you can get it at any local fly shop, uh, hopefully. Uh, and then what I like to use as a post, instead of some people like to use elk, some people like to use calf tail, I like to use uh, a rainy product that I find really, really nice. And uh, I got it here at the shop. I got one package left because I'm grabbing them all to tie my hexes. Uh, but anyway, it's pair post. Hope you could see that pretty decent. Uh, and it got some instructions on how to do it. Uh, but that's what I like to use and it's fairly simple to use versus calf tail or elk. You know, you ain't got all those extra fibers sticking up and you'll see you actually when I start tying this fly. Uh, the next product I use of course is dark brown thread and 6 odd. And last but not least is hackle. Now I had this old cream kind of, I don't know, looks like a, a speckled kind of cream color. I do like putting cream on my hexes, my um, cream color hackle. You can use different colors like white. Again, bear in mind that the hackle represents, you know, the wings. So they're going to be either white or speckled, mottled, uh, or you can use uh, a whiting product, ginger, you know, something like this will work. Okay. So, and then last, uh, again, I said last but not least, but uh, don't forget your hook. And I use a size eight dry fly hook. In this case, I'm using a Mustad 94840, but you can use pretty much any of the uh, uh, dry fly hooks as long as it's got a large gap to it. You want it to have a good size gap. You know, fish that do go after hexes are what I like to call slashers. They do come at it because there's so many of them. They do come at it and slash it. And you got to set fast. You got to be very weary. Most of the hexes around here come up at that, like 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the morning. So you got to really, you know, get your game on because uh, um, they are what I call slashers. So, okay, let me go ahead and focus you in on the hook. 
and hopefully you could see a little bit better what I'm doing here. Ba -ba -ba -ta 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 -ta. Hopefully that works. Anyway, got any questions or comments, please email me or call me on the phone. I'm trying to do my best here. Alright, get some light in here. And what I like to do is I like to cover the whole hook with thread. And then right about the middle of the shank, about the middle of the shank, I add the post. Again, small little cylinder of foam, closed cell foam. Super, super easy to work with versus putting calf tail or elk on here. Uh, I kind of equate the hexes in a pattern to uh, muskier bass flies. Believe me, it doesn't have to be pretty. Uh, these fish, their, their nocturnal vision is not as great as it is during, you know, any kind of daylight uh, vision. So, you know, they are going at stuff pretty crazy. So what I do is I, I tie it to where I put thread wraps at the base and in the back to where the post stands straight up. Get some of the long stuff. Pick some of the longest stuff you can get out of the patch of deer hair. And you don't need a real huge clump. You know, some people like their hexes thick bodied. You know, again, about that size. Cut it all the way down to the hide. I always recommend that. And then clean the stuff out. You know, inside any deer hair, you're gonna have stuff that needs to be cleaned. Wash it out pretty good. I call it washing. All you do is you take your comb and get all that under fur out of there. So it gets nice and clean. And then what I do is I turn the hair over to where the tips are facing that way, okay? Makes sense? So the tips are facing away from the hook eye. And then what you do is you lay just the bottom edge of that deer hair right against the eye. I like to make two wraps of deer hair. Put a little cinch on it. Don't really go crazy with hard, hard pull down cinches. Just nice and snug. If you notice, I just made about seven or eight wraps, and then I move my fingers back and I go over the rest of the stuff I'm holding. Bear in mind, I got the post right in between my fingers there. And I go all the way to the base of the post. So wherever the post is, that's where I bring my thread back to. Okay? Then I take my scissors and I do a bunch of cleaning. Now, I'm sorry, folks, if it, it's a little blurry to see. Again, I'm doing this from my phone. Uh, it has been a last minute film, so I thought, well, I'll go ahead and put one out on doing the hex done. Now, you can use hex nymphs. Hex spinners are also pretty popular, but uh, I find that most of the fish, not only trout, but walleye, smallmouth bass, love to go up to the top and grab the dun. Okay, so now we got the deer hair mounted. Notice the tips are facing this way. And what I did is I you know, took the thread and covered up some of the stuff by the post, make it look a little nicer. And then I bring the thread way up against the edge of the deer hair. Now what do I do? And then I bring it back again, bring the thread back. And now I am, my thread is now back by the edge of the post forward of the post, just forward of the post, right about there. Then I take my deer hair, push it back with my fingers, and expose the eye. You want to be able to expose the eye pretty decent. And then I just make some soft wraps. Not real hard. You don't want to put a lot of hard wraps on this because what you'll do is you'll crush the deer hair and it'll look funky. Nice, delicate wraps, and then 
I pull the post up and move as best you can. I move all the deer hair back and I try to hold that post up. And then I take a wrap right behind the post like that. So if you could see that, I put that first wrap right up against the back of the post and leave. You notice I'm just leaving my uh, thread hang. If you leave your thread hang, it's going to put a lot of nice tension. Now comes the difficult part in doing the paradrake. What you have to do extended body, they call it the paradrake extended body. What you got to do next is lift up all the deer hair and bring the thread gently I mean you could apply a little bit of pressure but not much walk it up the deer hair notice how I'm going up the deer hair and I am holding it I'm pinching it in between my fingers going as high as I can then I'm going back this will take some practice folks I mean you'll you'll get it once you get it down, it's fairly easy. You'll get on a good run. Uh, you know, bear in mind, I got to do two dozen of these things. Uh, so as you're going back, you notice the one thing that you want to give this hex pattern. And I, I go all the way back into the front where we started up by the, the bullet head. But what you notice is as you're actually bringing the thread back and bringing it forward again you're actually holding the extended body up and that's where it gets its name from extended body so as you go back up and down you'll notice that the thread also gives it kind of a segmented look adds a little bit of brown to the body which if you've seen a hex it's got brown on top yellow on the bottom and it makes it look really really super nice and it floats super super well that's why I also like to use Rainey's Parapost because it makes it float a little bit nicer than regular product, natural products, because they get wet and they start to sink. Okay? Last, you want to add the hackle. Now, it's a paradrake. Like any paradrake, you do have to know how to wrap the hackle on there. Grab a fairly decent one. You don't have to go super large. and then take the fuzz away okay notice this I'm taking the fuzz away from the bottom and then you'll notice I expose the hackle expose the hackle <laughs> I'm exposing the hackle and then what you do is if you notice the round curvature of all hackle has that naturally what you want to do is now bear in mind the thread is up by the head the bullet head and forward of the post. And what I do is I lay it flatwise. I lay it flatwise toward me and secure it on top of the drake. And I make quite a few wraps because I don't want it to pull out. Next, what you gotta do is bear this in mind is Trim that stem away. What you want to do is you have to wrap from the top and go down. All right, does that make sense? You don't want to wrap and go up because then you got to go all the way down to secure it. So what you typically want to do is wrap from the top and go down. And this is how you do it. So the thread is ready. All I do is I take my hackle, start at the post, Give it a little bit of height, not much, maybe maybe an eighth of an inch. And then I slowly start my way down toward the body of the drake. So I'm actually winding it around the post carefully. Then I get myself a pair of hackle pliers right on the tips. And I go, I continue to go around toward the bottom. You want to head down toward the bottom of the post. Put a little cinch on it. Cinch meaning, put a little, put a little pressure on it. You don't want your fly to fall apart. 
Now what I do is I let the, the bobbin hang. It's not gonna go anywhere. The bobbin's hanging, it's putting pressure on the hackle. It's holding it in place. And then what I do is I take the hackle, pull it back, secure it. Can you guys see that? I hope you can, because this is an important part. All right, once that's done, then I cut the bob, the hackle pliers off with the hackle. And you can get a better idea of what it looks like. And then, I'll show you in a minute. What I do is I secure it. And that's it. Apply head cement. You can actually apply, maybe take a magic marker of some kind, brown hopefully, and do some marks on the top if you'd like. You know, maybe you got really, really particular fish. So now you got your hex pretty much situated, and then what I do is I just trim a little bit of that off, and that gives you your Paradrake hex done. And uh, I've done real well with them in the past. Uh, they catch a lot of fish, and uh, I carry them here at the shop, at Great Lakes Fly Shop, here in Duluth, Minnesota, 4426 Regent Street. I'm on the east side of Duluth, and you'll get a better picture what that guy looks like. I'm sorry, it's kind of blurry, but you know what? And there he is. Okay, and then, just to let you know, we're imitating that guy. Okay, guys, that's it for today. John Fennell here at Great Lakes Fly Shop, and good to see you again. If you got comments, again, go on Great Lakes Flies, F L Y S dot com, or give me a call, 218 740 3040. Talk to you then. Take care.